Congratulations! We have come a long way and understood a lot of concepts on lean. Now it is time to put together all that we have learned to make the future state of our VSM. To get the best from this lesson, it is highly recommended that you go through the earlier lessons of the series. The links are available in the description below. Let's begin. If you remember from lesson 3, this is our existing value stream map for ABC Limited. In VSM, our objective is to highlight the sources of waste and eliminate them by implementing these lean principles which we have studied in the previous lessons. So we want our future state value stream to be a chain of production processes where each process is linked to their customer either by the continuous flow or pull. Now looking back to our current state map, what problems can we see here? Hmm, perhaps the big problems are this huge inventory and the disconnected process sections pushing their production to the next level based on their individual schedules. Let us tackle this with our lean principles starting with tag time. Now the customer needs 18,000 parts per month or 720 parts a day. Let us say I have 20 working hours available in a day, that is 72,000 seconds. So my tag time is roughly 100 seconds. That means ABC Private Limited needs to produce a part every 100 seconds in its manufacturing line. Now this number does not include any equipment downtime, changeover time, or time wasted during manufacturing of defective parts. So our cycle time has to be less than 100 seconds. Before we move on to the next step, we have to decide whether we want to build a supermarket at FG stores and plan our manufacturing line to build to fill the supermarket or we want to have a customer schedule at the manufacturing line and build directly to ship, no FG stock inventory. Though the second option is the ideal condition, I suggest we start with option 1 and work to achieve build to ship as we advance in our lean journey. So back to point number two. Now that we have a tag time of 100 seconds and an FG supermarket to dispatch the material to the customers, let us see where we can introduce a continuous flow. We will use an operator balance chart to do that. The cycle time of stamping operation is pretty less. Most probably this operation is serving many other downstream processes and not just the LHRH bracket assembly. Also, the changeover time for press are comparatively higher. It does not make any sense to slow down this machine and put it into a continuous flow to match the tag time. Next, the process sections welding 1 and 2 and assembly 1 and 2 have fairly similar cycle times. And these sections are already dedicated for LH and RH bracket manufacturing. So what is preventing ABC Private Limited to put all these sections into one section? Probably nothing. Let us try to put them together. If you see, the combined cycle time for welding 1 and 2 comes around 85 seconds, which is well below my tag time. So why not assign only one operator for both these processes? Similarly, in assembly section 1, if three operators can complete the process in 62 seconds, it is possible that with some modifications or kaizens, four operators can complete the assembly section in 50 seconds. And then these four operators can also perform the assembly 2 in almost 25-30 seconds. So the process of assembly 1 and 2 can be completed by four operators in roughly 80 seconds which is again well below my tag time. That means instead of the 7 operators, I can use 5 operators and still produce to my tag time and that too in a continuous flow. Amazing! So using step 1 and 2, my value stream can become something like this. Let's go through what we have done up till now. We have a supermarket in the finished goods section. The customer is picking material in the multiples of 20, which is my tray size. And we are releasing the Kanbans in the set of 20 to the welding and assembly process section. By doing this alone, we have reduced a lot of inventory. We should update the timeline also, but let us just ignore the timeline at this moment. Okay, we don't see any other possibility to create a continuous flow. 
So let us move ahead and install supermarkets. We already have one supermarket at the finished goods. We can put another supermarket between the stamping press and this assembly process section. The parts in this supermarket are smaller in size and let us say that 100 parts can be kept in a bin. So a withdrawal Kanban of 100 parts will be released in one lot and now the stamping process will produce according to this Kanban. Or I can say that stamping process no longer receives schedule from the central planning department. But there is one problem. 100 part means only 200 seconds of production of stamping. And I cannot take a change over every 3-4 minutes in my stamping process. So ABC can use a batch Kanban. Let me explain. Every time a withdrawal Kanban is released, it is stacked upon the similar Kanban. As soon as the number of withdrawal Kanbans of any part goes beyond the minimum order quantity, the complete bunch of the withdrawal Kanban is released and the stamping process takes a changeover accordingly. Of course, you have to decide the quantity of each part in the supermarket in line with this new system, but once it is done, the scheduling of the stamping process becomes automatic. Similarly, we can have a supermarket at receiving stores for coils. Whenever a coil is consumed, the withdrawal carbon will be released to the central planning department and a requirement can be sent to the supplier. This way, the orders will be based on the actual usage and not based on the assumptions of what the future usage will be. Further, we can line up with the supplier to have a daily milk run instead of two trucks per week so that he can still dispatch a truck with full load but now the trucks will have material for a different customers. In that case, we will receive material on a daily basis and we can further reduce our inventory at the receiving stores. Let us move to the next step and identify our pacemaker, which is pretty simple in this case. Since there has to be a continuous flow downstream of the pacemaker till the finished goods store, this welding and assembly process section is clearly our pacemaker process. Moving ahead, since the customer needs 12,000 LH bracket assembly and 6,000 RH bracket assembly per month, or we can say 480 LH and 240 RH bracket assembly on a daily shipment basis. Considering 20 parts per bin or tray, I can distribute my production at the pacemaker process so as to make 24 bins of LH and then 12 bins of RH in a day. Now from the sales perspective, this makes sense because in this way, the changeover will be minimum. However, we already know the problems a batch production can cause, like the inventory and the upstream processes and supermarkets will increase. The lead time will also increase. So I have to improve my capability to produce every part, every shift, and then every R, and so on. In order to achieve this level, we have to perform quick and frequent changeovers in the assembly lines. So it becomes absolutely necessary to install some fail-safe mechanism or Hokayoke to prevent the wrong parts being assembled. Coming to the information flow. Now the central planning department has to send today's schedule to the dispatch team. This team will pull the material from the finished goods supermarket and the withdrawal condoms will be kept in a load leveling box which can be used as a production schedule for the welding and assembly section. Each column of this box represents the time required to produce one tray or bin which is roughly 30 minutes for our part. And the two rows represent the two models. After every shipment to the customer, the dispatch team can place the withdrawal Kanbans according to the required sequence in this box. And accordingly, the upstream process, that is the welding and assembly section, will produce. Back to our VSM. So the scheduling will be done through load leveling box, which is represented by this symbol. Great. Now let us look at the timeline that we have achieved. If we now compare the lead times of our current state and the future state, we have reduced 21 days to just 6 days. Meaning, now my customers will get the delivery in 6 days instead of 21 days. And we have not added any new machine or equipment. That is the power of VSM. I hope I was able to explain the basic concept. In case you need more details, you can go through this book or you can ask me in the comments below. Lean is a continuous journey 
and I will see you again with the next topic. Have a nice day.